Reddit, what is your creepiest, most unnerving story, real or not? Please creep us out. Please do like, share, and subscribe. There are already 3,022 submissions, so this will probably get buried, but here's a true story. In the late 70s, my uncle was studying medicine at the University of Chicago. After a morning class, he decided that he would hitchhike back home to Lincoln Park on the north side instead of pay for a taxi. A man drove up in a Plymouth satellite and offered my uncle a ride. The man looked normal and seemed friendly, lighthearted even. So my uncle got in the car and they started driving toward Lakeshore Drive. However, once they got there, the man drove south on Lakeshore instead of north, towards Lincoln Park. My uncle told the man he was going the wrong way and to turn around and head north. The man looked at my uncle, put his hand on his knee and said, No son, you are coming with me, and smiled darkly at him. My uncle froze in panic and when they hit traffic near the south shore, he quickly unlocked the passenger door and ran away without looking back. A year or two later on a cold December day, my uncle was having coffee in a cafe with my future aunt when he caught something on the TV that made his blood run cold. He saw the man that had picked him up from school that day the year before. He had been arrested for the suspected rape and killing of over 20 young men and boys. The man on the television was John Wayne Gacy and he had removed the door handle off the passenger side door to prevent the men he picked up from escaping. My family and I used to go camping a lot when I was younger. Camping consisted of renting a cabin in the woods and spending a little time in the wilderness. So we consistently rented this cabin in Pennsylvania where we would spend long weekends when everyone in the family had some time off. My two brothers and I, each being in the 9 to 12 year old range, would always run off in the woods and bullshit about while my parents did whatever. The cabin was on a mountain. If you followed a dirt road a ways past the cabin, the forest would open and there was a large field on the top. The field was about the size of a football field. Near the edge of the field on the far side was a graveyard. The graveyard was pretty small, about 20 graves surrounded by a wrought iron fence. The fence was about 10 to 12 feet tall with the gothic-ish spikes on top. The fence had a gate, but it was locked with a thick, rusty chain and padlock. Being kids, we were able to spread the gate apart enough to squeeze through. The small gravestones were very old and worn. I remember seeing one dated 1890-something. On top of one of the graves, just resting on it, was a smooth black stone. It looked like onyx or something, a little smaller than a golf ball, but not perfectly round. My older brother pocketed it. We dicked around a little then left. Back at the cabin, which had one bedroom where my parents stayed, and large living room or kitchen where we stayed. We were hanging out while my parents were sleeping in bed. It was probably about 11.30 or so at night when a loud bang 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 happened at the front door, which is right in the living room. Me and my brothers were all scared shitless, understandably too afraid to answer the door. Bang bang bang! Again, the door shook moments later. It sounded like someone was trying to knock it off the hinges. My father emerged from the bedroom asking WTF was going on. Bang! The door clashed. He knew by the looks on our faces we had no idea. He grabbed a wood chopping axe and we had and walked over to the door. He looked scared shitless himself. He swung the door open and there was nothing but the night. No one in sight. After hounding us for information and us having no idea, we went back to bed. I think no one slept much if at all that night. The next day we were back to dicking around in the woods and we again found ourselves in the old graveyard. The smooth black stone that my brother took was on top of the same grave. We ran. We ran fast. It's been a while, so it's unlikely anyone would read this except for OP, but what the hell. I was in Taiwan one year when I was younger and had traveled to a busy night market. These are popular gatherings that usually operate in the evening. Nearby, I spotted a sign for a net cafe in a five to six story tall building. Thinking I'd fire off some quick emails, I walked in the dark, small entrance of the building. The building was older and hasn't been well maintained, but it's not out of the ordinary in Taiwan. The entrance just had a dark hallway that led to a small elevator. I pressed the elevator call button and entered. The elevator was uncharacteristically new compared to the building, but I didn't think much of it. Like some Chinese buildings, there wasn't a fourth floor. It's considered bad luck since four stands like death. So it just reads one, two, three, five, six, which was usual. I looked for the floor the net cafe was at, sixth floor and pressed the button. It lurched into action quietly and began the ascent. When it stopped, I figured it was my floor, so I instinctively began to step out. Right before stepping out, however, the sight outside the elevator stopped me. It was pitch dark. 
only lit by the light in the elevator. It looked like it hadn't been occupied for decades, with some random pieces of furniture covered with white cloth or similar. It was a small building, so each floor were single occupancy, so I could see pretty much the entire floor from the elevator. Thinking I must have gotten the wrong floor, I checked the light that indicates which floor you're on. Strangely, there was nothing. None of the indicators were on, but the floor button to the net cafe was still lit, so I know I haven't gotten there yet. All this happened within a couple of seconds. That's when I noticed a figure moving in the distance on the floor. It was not very visible, but I could make out what looked like a person dressed in some kind of gown moving slowly towards the elevator. I was thoroughly creeped out, so I started pressing the closed door button. As soon as I pressed it, the elevator light flickered off. I'm this close to pissing my pants, and it's actually kind of freaking me out thinking back to it. The lights flickered back on under a second, and the door closed. The elevator jolted back to life. A few moments later, it opened again to the net cafe. I'm beyond relieved at this point. I walked out immediately and sat down at a computer. After gathering my wits a bit, I walked over to the cashier's desk and told them what I saw. The girl working there listened and her face turned a bit ashen, so I asked her if she heard of similar. She told me that she's never experienced it, but some co-workers and occasional customers have brought it up. Basically, the building has six floors, and the fourth floor had a history. Apparently the floor used to be a hair salon of sorts, until one of the employees killed herself there for some reason. She slit her wrists over the hair wash station and died. The store continued operations despite stories of weird appearances. When customers got their hair rinsed, the water would look a little red, like the customer was bleeding. Little things like that, and a couple of people reported seeing someone's figure walking away in the mirror. Naturally, the business closed down a few months later. The building owner tried to re-rent the place out but never had any luck. Most businesses are quite superstitious, and no one wanted to rent the fourth floor after someone had died in it, even at a very cheap price. Finally, after dropping the price to nearly nothing, a stationary supply store wanted to rent. During the renovations of the floor, however, several accidents would happen. Tools would end up in strange places, a mirror from the previous business shattered when no one was near it, and finally a worker had his hand jammed between the elevator doors when it closed on him unexpectedly. The workers refused to continue working, and finally, the business left, and the building owner finally gave up and shut down the floor. He then had the elevator company come in to replace the panel so that the elevator could not go to the fourth floor. Let me repeat that. The elevator was programmed to never go to the fourth floor. It doesn't even have a button, but for some reason, sometimes when people take the elevator, it would go to the fourth floor and the doors would open and some, like myself, would see a figure walking around in the dark. True story. My family used to rent a house in town along with my aunt and uncle when I was very young that we eventually moved out of because of very strange things that happened while we lived there. But the most memorable and final straw was the night my aunt was using the toilet and just happened to look down at this small hole in the floor that had been there since we moved in and saw a man standing in the basement looking right back up at her smiling. My aunt ran out of the bathroom and screamed for my uncle. After explaining to him that there was a man in the basement, my uncle went and got my dad and they both went down the stairs, the only entrance into the basement, where they found nothing but footprints in the dirty floor where someone had been standing and moving around under the hole. True story, my friend's dad used to haul shopping carts from western Washington to eastern Washington for repair, then bring repaired ones back. He did this driving a semi with a trailer. One summer, my friend rode with him and told me about what happened on a stretch of rural highway. They're on the road and my buddy is starting to doze off. Ahead in the middle of the road is a box. Her dad says, hey, want me to hit that box? And he just kind of grunts and shrugs and closes his eyes. A few seconds later, he wakes up because the rig is screaming to a stop and his dad is yelling something while he jumps out. He, my friend, doesn't know what the hell is going on. He gets out of the side of the cab and looks back down the road where his dad is running. His dad is chasing and yelling at two little kids. The box is kicked up sideways. The kids were in the damn box. He swerved around it at the last second because he felt weird about the box. It was 14 years ago he told me about this. I have never driven over a back. My four-year-old daughter was supposedly asleep when I heard noises coming from her upstairs bedroom. I tried to listen but could not make out what was being said. I approached the room and she stopped talking. Thinking I alarmed her, I went into the room. At the time, she was sharing it with her three-year-old sister. 
I walked in and saw the four-year-old sitting up in bed. I smiled and said, is everything okay? She said, fine, but her sister said they were keeping her up. I asked, who? My four-year-old said, sorry, but that she was talking. When I asked her who she was talking to, my three-year-old sat up and said, the girl in the window, she said you were coming. After I shit a brick, I asked who the girl was, and they both said a girl comes and stands in front of the window at night and talks to them. Not knowing what to say, I said, okay, tucked them in and hung around outside their door. The next day, I asked about the girl. They said she came back but was mad. I waited a few days and asked again. My four-year-old said the girl in the window was still mad. I forgot about it for a week when my wife said, who were the girls talking to upstairs? Freaked out, I ran upstairs and both girls were sitting under the window looking up. They turned and looked at me and asked if I wanted to meet the girl. When they turned around, disappointed, they said the girl left. It had been about five years since, and I have not heard about the girl in the window since then. This is my creepiest real story. I'll keep it short. We'd been driving from coast to coast, and in Nebraska, we decided we needed to sleep. We pulled onto a side road and bedded down in the back of our pickup. It had a cap on the back and a mattress in the bed, cool truck. Then we heard these blood-curdling screams. It was a woman. This was before cell phones. We hear a man grunt, and the screams stop rather abruptly. The next morning, we heard about a murder in the area. I think we heard a murder. Two young kids are upstairs in their room playing their PlayStation. All of a sudden, they hear their mom's voice angrily calling for them from downstairs. They're confused because their mom rarely, if ever, gets angry at them, and they tell her they will come in a minute. They keep playing, but she screams out again, telling them to come right away. They get up and start walking towards the stairs, when their mom appears in a crevasse in the wall, quickly pulling them in and covering their mouths. Scared, she puts her fingers to her lips and tells, It's okay, I heard it too. Every time I have my one son on their changing table, he stares at the same spot about five inches over or besides my shoulder, roughly in the direction of their bedroom door. There isn't really anything there to look at, though I know that doesn't mean much for a five-month-old. It really raises the hair on the back of my neck, though. I have to glance over my shoulder all the time to make sure. This story was told to me by a girl who I recently moved in with. It happened to her a few years ago, and when she told me about it, it sent shivers down my spine. She was attending the biggest Irish horse racing meeting of the year, known as the Galway Races. It's basically a huge piss-up, where the whole city goes to the pub and gambles for several days. People from all over the country come to Galway City and usually end up staying outside of the city in rural areas, as everywhere is booked up in the city itself. This girl in particular was staying in a small house on a narrow, secluded country lane with a friend of hers. One night, she and her friend came home quite drunk and they realized that they had no key to get into the house. They sat down at the front of the house and had a rest while trying to figure out what to do. She told me she had a very strange feeling that something was wrong at this stage and instantly sobered up. The road was completely quiet and there was no street lamps as it was not a main road. The two girls walked down the road a hundred yards or so to the next house and knocked on the door. After a few minutes, the neighbor answered the door and gave them a spare key she had. The girls then went home and went straight to bed. The next morning, they looked out the window to see the two police cars outside and a line of police tape cordoning off the narrow road. They spoke to the officers, who told them that a man had been walking home from the races and was hit by a car outside their door. The officers then explained that the man had been killed in a hit and run and was lying on the ground still alive throughout the night. They also said he was struck before the time when they had arrived home, meaning that they had been sitting several feet from the dying man when they rested on the doorstep. I have been following Reddit for a year now, but only signed up today, as I was reading all these spooky stories and decided to share this one with you all. I hope you like it, and that my Reddit is up to scratch. This is the most unnerving story I ever heard. Supposedly, it is true. My best friend said it happened to his uncle. His uncle had a sugar shack where he boiled maple sap to make maple syrup, and above the open vat of boiling liquid was rafters. The dude's young daughter climbed up into the rafters and was playing up there, and then fell right into the boiling sugar solution. The vat was huge, so she went right under, and she came up screaming, flesh blistering off her, completely horrific. The guy took the big ore-like implement he used to stir the boiling syrup and used it to push her back down under the water and killed his own daughter. Because he knew to try to rescue her, she'd pretty much be 100% burned 
and would die an even more gruesome death. He swore this was true. It happened to his own family a long time ago, but he heard it from his aunt, so maybe it's bullshit, but he certainly believed it. I was super excited to get my first apartment. It was in an old antebellum house that was split into four units. Very cool place to live. However, every time I was taking a shower, I would get this overwhelmingly creepy feeling, like somebody was watching me. Then the dream started. I kept dreaming about this old lady in a pink nightgown. Sometimes she just looked frail and sweet, and she'd say that I should go with her. She never said where we'd go. All their times, the dreams were terrifying. Her eye sockets were empty. Her hair was greasy, stringy, and falling out. Her mouth was twisted in a tormented scream, and she'd frantically claw the air trying to grab me. The longer I lived there, the more menacing the dreams got. Also, the feeling of unease and the feeling of being watched in the shower increased dramatically. By the time we moved out, I couldn't close my eyes in the shower. It sounds silly, but I had this overwhelming feeling that I was going to die or lose my soul or something if I had my eyes closed too long. After moving out, I discussed all these weird feelings with a friend of mine who had recently moved into a house across the street from the old apartment. I was trying to laugh it off. He said that another friend of his used to live in the apartment above mine several years ago. An old lady died in what used to be my apartment. Nobody else wanted to live in that unit for more than a couple of months at a time. The building recently burned down. The fire started in my old apartment. They still don't know what started the fire. Still creeps me out. 